We're happy to have Rachel Jason join us in this conversation. Rachel is a multi-instrumentalist, conductor, and music educator, and she can be heard playing with the Boston-based art rock band Walter Sickert and the Army of Broken Toys and the New England Film Orchestra. Rachel is an orchestra director at Lexington High School in Lexington, Massachusetts, with award-winning ensembles. Rachel, really good to have you with us, and we'd just like to hear a little bit about your perspective of working on this piece. When you initially pitched Wake Up Little Sparrow and wanted it to be just viola and voices, the world was just so wide open. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, these two people have been making music together for decades. How do I bring myself to this and how do we support this absolutely beautiful song? Mm -hmm. I remember watching YouTube video of a version of the song and thinking, I wish it were slower <laughs> because mm. there's this absolutely beautiful minor pentatonic melody. And then to me, the lyrics felt so still and felt like they needed more time to marinate and think. And so immediately I thought, what if there was more space? What if we use this sparse nature to our advantage? Like the melody itself is sparse. So what happens if I lead with a rhythmic gesture and kind of a groove based wide gesture and really just allow the two of you the space to play vocally? That was so much fun to do because you set it up like that. And Danielle and I, we really love to just have space and, you know, flow over something. So it was really wonderful that you created that kind of foundation for the piece. For me, what was really special about was the tone and the warmth of your instrument. You know, Daniela, the whole project, I think one of the things I enjoyed most was the t the timbre interplay between your voice and my instrument, because they're so similar, like similar in characteristics, similar in range. At times we have similar improvisatory tendencies. I thought that it would lead to less independence, but it ended up just being this kind of like beautiful braid of sound. I felt amplified and complimented and completed and all of that <laughs> all at once. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so often that collaboration feels that effortless. I think that there's always, with any musician, it's, you know, when you're when you're developing your craft and you're getting better and you're acquiring tools, there's always this voice of like, but what else can I do? And what's next? And what's more? And, and especially if any, if you've been through any sort of, you know, high octane, play all the fastest notes, biggest competition, all the stuff, you know, whether it's a conservatory environment or a professional music environment, there's this more, more, more tendency. And I love that the whole project was just about how do we deliver this art? How do we get these pieces out to the world? How do we best complement? And for me, that really gave me permission to do less. I didn't need to play every note I could on viola. I can just leave space. I can play just a couple of notes on purpose. I can enjoy the space between these voices. I'm so grateful that this piece was on your radar and that it ended up on the concert. We are extremely grateful that you were part of the project. And, you know, it was it was so much fun. I was thinking back about how we rehearsed this piece, coming to Lexington High School sometimes <laughs> and finding you. <laughs> uh, we would go somewhere and we would only have limited amount of time and we would just create, you know, these moments where we could work on the piece. The spaces we ended up being where we were creating was really interesting and fun, too. When Christy invited us to do this piece on the NEC faculty concert, I was so excited. And though I've been in Jordan Hall as a conductor before, I hadn't been there as a violist. And I was absolutely in my own head, sitting backstage in the green room, looking at this enormous probably five foot wide picture of NEC orchestra taken from above or up high in Jordan Hall, looking out at the shot of probably 120 musicians and seeing one black musician. And we're sitting here with just all these incredible NEC faculty coming to the green room, absolutely delightful. And then I'm going out and I'm hearing the sound checks and everybody sounds incredible. And I'm looking at this giant picture and thinking, wow, it really is that lonely. There's one black person in this picture. I'm the one black person that's not from Africa on this concert. And mm -hmm. I wonder how many black people have been on this stage, how many black women have been on this stage, how many queer black women have been on this stage, how many black women have had the privilege of performing another black woman's work on that stage. And the categories get smaller and smaller. And I absolutely put an immense amount of pressure on myself. And I left that experience so rattled and not feeling like I did the piece the justice that I could have. And it wasn't until I talked to 
members of the audience who told me about the positive impact that that piece had and the intense focus that it brought to the center of the concert and kind of like how intimate that moment felt, that I could really kind of see the piece through the eyes of the people who got to experience the art. So kind of to see myself as a conduit instead of the experience being about me. So that was a really beautiful kind of circular moment of being like, I wonder if I'll do this justice. And then to just wrap it all around, being able to go into the studio at Berkeley and then record our version of that piece was so empowering. Yeah, absolutely. 